Located in Southern Colorado's San Juan Mountains, Wolf Creek Ski Area claims the most snow in Colorado. The ski area's high elevation along the Continental Divide lets the flakes pile up from December to April, making it a local favorite and powder seeker paradise. All levels of riders will find enjoyable runs here, but the resort is best known for hike to terrain and tree skiing. Hiking along the challenging knife ridge ensures powder stashes long after a snowstorm. We arrived during a dry spell and we're still determined to find some fresh tracks on Wolf Creek's 1600 acres. There are several lifts that take you to the top, but expect to do a lot of hiking. So once you're at the top, there's a nice ridge line. We're going to go up to Alberta Peak, and then we're going to go on the knife edge, which looks really scary, but we're going to go try it out and get to the far end of the resort and see what the snow is like over there. Wolf Creek is one of six ski resorts on Colorado's Powder Highway. It is a four and a half hour drive southwest from Denver and a 75 minute drive east of Durango on Highway 160. The ski area is on Wolf Creek Pass, 30 minutes from Pagosa Springs or South Fork, the nearest towns with accommodations. Wolf Creek has three main chairlifts from the base area. Raven has the beginner and easy runs, Bonanza is more challenging with Hike 2 Bonanza Bowl, and Treasure Stoke has long intermediate runs top to bottom with several Hike 2 Bowls along the divide up to Alberta Peak. Alberta Lift has intermediate tree runs or access to the knife ridge with drops to several steep chutes en route to Horseshoe Bowl. Elma gets you back to the base area. You'll need a car to get to Wolf Creek and there's plenty of free parking near the base. Tickets are reasonably priced here and so are gear rentals. There's cafeteria style food in the base lodge and beginner learning areas. Raven Chair has the beginner terrain at Wolf Creek. At the top is the Raven's Nest with a grill serving burgers and pizza. The terrain on the way down is a mix of gentle rolling slopes, long intermediate cruisers, and some bumps or glades if you want a bit more challenge. There aren't many green runs at this ski area, but there are some less difficult intermediate trails dotted on the map that ride like slower cat tracks. Intermediate level riders have more options. Next to Raven is Bonanza Chair to reach a mix of runs back to the base. You'll notice that many of the trees in the gladed sections are dead from the pine beetle infestation that wreaked havoc on the area. The resort is still removing dead trees and recovering. From the top of Bonanza, expert riders can also hike to Bonanza Bowl for quick steep runs. From here, the hike is uphill, so the alternative is to take Treasure Stoke Lift and walk downhill. Treasure Lift climbs from the base up an open bowl to the summit. On putter days, head straight down from the lift, funneling back to the base, but longer after a storm, there are several worthwhile hike to areas. To the right off the lift are Exhibition Ridge and Bonanza Bowl for quick open runs. To the left off the lift are several more bowls. First along the hike are Prospector Ridge, the Glory Hole, and the Boundary Bowl. These offer rolling pitches, possible cornices, and rocky drops. The next avalanche gate over has Montezuma Bowl and the peak chutes with steeper pitches and possible cliffs. Last along the hike, about 30 minutes from the lift, is the top of Alberta Peak. The climb is less steep from the Treasure Stoke lift side than the Alberta lift side. You're still hiking close to 12,000 feet, so pace yourself by soaking in the views along the way. You made it! You made it! The ride down is a nice challenge with rocky sections and steep pitches. The terrain is like a staircase, short and sweet steep sections with gentler slopes in between, ending on a low angle run out. The flat areas can be more of a problem for snowboarders than skiers, especially in deep snow. The next section of the resort is serviced by Alberta Lift. Here there are bathrooms, picnic tables, and a grill. It's a nice place to rest up before more hiking. Alberta Lift does have several intermediate runs that weave down and around the trees. As long as you're linking your turns, beginners can enjoy this area too. For more of a challenge, at the top of Alberta Lift is the knife ridge to some of Wolf Creek's most exciting terrain. To the right on the climb takes you back up Alberta Peak along Step Bowl. But we recommend heading left on this hike, which takes you on the staircase walkway along extremely steep drops and rocky chutes. Depending on the conditions, the knife ridge can be slippery, so take your time. Oh, knife edges are not my friend. 15 minutes of hiking gets you to the knife ridge and dog chutes, 30 minutes to the lettered glades, and 45 minutes to horseshoe bowl. I'm still making progress toward the top, right? We made it! Woohoo! We went as far as we could go. The crows are coming. The crows have eyes. At the far end, we dropped into Voodoo Bowl, catching some soft snow through the trees to a long, intermediate, windy path back to the lift. We ended up at Charity Jane, the newest lift at Wolf Creek, which helps with the traverse back to Alberta for another lap. Hiking the whole route can take a long time, so hopefully you catch a powder day with easier laps to fresh lines. Oh, that was sweet. 
At the end of the day, Elma Lift took us over the ridge and we rode back down to the base area. Well, that's it for Wolf Creek. I'm Jennifer and this is Jeff with Snowboard Traveler and we'll see you at the next mountain.